evening all welcome everyone to the iria kerala pg case discussion on genito urinary system today actually we are discussing on genito urinary system in association with genomed at uh, towards this i welcome dr gomadi subramanian president kerala iria dr rijo mathew secretary kerala iria and dr ramesh shenai program coordinator so today our faculty is dr brudala mudai as she is assistant professor in saint hospital mumbai on behalf of iira kerala i <coughs> welcome madam dr brudala and also welcome dr anish associate professor malabar medical college calicut um now over to dr anish for the introduction of the faculty thank you sir uh today is uh, we are having a few case uh, discussions by pgs of uh, uh, lokmanya tilak municipal medical college uh, led by our faculty uh, today is doc, uh, dr mudula mutte uh, she is assistant professor in cion hospital that is lokmanya tilak municipal medical college uh, she has done dnb and in mardi uh, and uh, she is uh, her area of interest is chest and uh, body imaging uh, she has many national and international publications uh, in her credit so she will be uh, discussing i think four cases with the pgs two case per pg uh, i also welcome uh, the pgs uh, for uh, today's uh, dr pooja and dr shubhi uh, um, uh, and good evening sir to dr good evening good evening uh, dr murdilla you can start the session dr murdilla uh dr murdilla audible uh, on network issue it is that no? video is stuck somya okay yeah somya can you check dr yeah. mridula are you online yes yeah, back mm. unmute yourself it's muted uh uh dr mridula yes yeah. yeah okay okay uh okay uh, dr mridula you can start the session oh my screen is visible yeah yeah yes no not yet uh screen is not visible for is, me it's visible ah huh? dr venu is oh, it yes, visible no, for no. you ah huh? no, it's not it's not visible madam yeah 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 it's not visible samya ala no. mridula samya Yes, I'll just uh, share my screen again. Uh, yeah. uh, okay. I mean, she needs to share the screen. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, yeah, Shubhi, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So we'll begin with the first case. This is a forty-year-old female complaining of pain in abdomen and hematuria. Thank you. 
so that's it so i'll just uh, show the images once again Should we should I show it again? No, ma'am. Okay. Should I start? Yes. Uh, on USG, we are seeing a, a well-defined round isoequoid lesion in the lower pole of kidney. Uh, it shows. Uh, mild internal vascularity. In the liver, there is uh, an ill-defined uh, hypoechoic lesion uh, with uh, internal vascularity. These are the plain uh, CT uh, images, action and coronal section, in which we can see, uh, and these are the contrast images. Uh, there is a well-defined lobulated, heterogeneously enhancing hypo to isotense lesion in the lower pole of right kidney. It is partially exophytic. Anything else you can see in, in these images? Apart from the kidneys? Uh, it is showing uh, heterogeneous. Uh, Yes, ma'am. Uh, there is a uh, filling defect noted in the uh, superior mesenteric vein, likely suggestive of thrombosis. And what about the bowel loops? I think Mridula, her net is unstable. Oh, ma'am, can you hear me? I can hear you, but the PG's uh, residence uh, the net is unstable, I think. Okay. Can you ask the uh, issue? Yeah, or, or the... Uh, or, or who is presenting? Subi? Subi. Okay, can you be a little more clear, Subi? It's not clear. Yes, ma'am. Should be. I think Mridula, she's. Yes, uh, ma'am. Yeah, please uh, go on, carry on. Don't wait for the answer. Uh, can you hear and see the screen? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you can, ma'am. 
Okay, and uh, what do you want to say about the vowel loops in this section? They are dilated, no? Yes, ma'am, dilated. Yeah. So, what uh, image is this? This is the contrast enhanced ultrasound, ma'am. Yes, and what do you see here? There is a well defined round lobulated region in the lower pole of right uh, kidney. It is showing an enhancement. Okay, and okay. So, uh, CT plane, arterial, and venous phase images. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in this, we can see an uh, ill defined hypodense lesion in segment seven of liver, which is showing a peripheral enhancement on arterial phase and slow or centripetal filling on venous phase, likely suggestive of hemangioma. Yeah, and corresponding uh, contrast ultrasound images. Yes, ma'am. In the first image, we can see the peripheral uh, nodular enhancement. And uh, on the next images, there is progressive centripetal filling. And on delayed, there is washout. On delayed, there is? Uh, there is uh, iso enhancement. Iso enhancement. Yeah. So what is your diagnosis? Uh, so my diagnosis is, ma'am, or uh, Neoplastic etiology of right kidney, likely renal cell carcinoma uh, with liver hemangioma and uh, superior mesenteric vein thrombosis. With small bowel obstruction. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, what are the uh, differentials for this lesion? Uh, uh, clear cell uh, RCC. No, what are the differentials uh, for this mass? One is RCC. What are the other differentials? Lymphoma. Okay. Metastasis. Yes, right. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what if you see a hyperechoic mass on ultrasound? What are the di uh, differentials? Uh, angiomyolipoma, ma'am. Okay. And even RCC can show hyperechoic. Hyper uh, they also can be hyperechoic. Then how do you differentiate between the two? Uh, ma'am, in uh, AML, there is fat component. Uh, in the CT images, we will see hypodense fat yes in and, AML. okay rccs also contain fat but they contain microscopic fat yes right then how do you differentiate between them on mri uh, in rcc uh, there is a microscopic fat so there will be uh, uh, in a post phase images there will be loss a uh, drop of signal and in uh, AML, they will appear uh, hyper intense on T1 and T2 also. And uh, there will be India ink artifact in AML because it is my microscopic fat in AML. What yes. if it is a lipid poor AML? How do you differentiate between a, a RCC and a lipid poor AML? Uh, in lipid poor AML, there is low signal intensity on T2. And in RCC, there is high signal intensity on T2 weighted images. Okay, right. And? RCCs will uh, involve the vein. Yes, ma'am. Perinephric fat, whereas AML will not. RCCs can also calcify. They can be calcifications in RCCs, whereas AML do not have calcifications. So if you see a lesion which has both fat and calcification, it is likely to be RCC rather than AML. Yes, ma'am. So uh, when do you say that a lesion is enhancing on CT? Uh, 
what is the criteria to say that the lesion is enhancing what uh, between the plain and rust images sorry uh it different hu difference of more than 20 okay and what is the which is the best phase to uh, look for a uh, uh, renal mass on ct nephrographic phase ma'am and do you know the various phases and the timings yes ma'am uh, first we take plain ct abdo then there is cortico medullary phase at 45 seconds then nephrographic phase at 9200 seconds and uh, then excretory phase at 7 to 10 minutes okay um do you know the various subtypes of, uh, of rcc and how to differentiate between them yes ma'am there are four subtypes clear cell papillary chromophobe and medullary uh, rcc a uh, clear cell is hypervascular tumor okay. it shows a heterogeneous enhancement and uh, there is more common involvement of renal vein and ivc also metastases are common in clear cell rcc it appears hyper intense on tt yes uh, in papillary rcc uh, it is a hypervascular tumor and uh, vein involvement and metastases are uh, rare but lymph nodal uh, involvement is more common okay. and it appears hypo intense on tt uh, chromophobe rcc is uh, uh, again a hypovascular tumor uh, and it shows homogeneous enhancement there is a uh, we can see a stellate scar in chromophobe rcc and where is do you see a scar in which tumor in the kidney oncocytoma okay and oncocytoma is a very close differential of renal cell carcinoma but oncocytomas are benign and yes, rccs are malignant which tumor do you see in sickle cell disease medullary carcinoma ma'am okay and do you know uh, rccs are associated with which syndromes yes ma'am uh clear cell rcc is uh, commonly associated with von hippel lindau syndrome and uh, tuberous sclerosis chromophobe rcc is associated with berthold hugh syndrome is pet ct a good uh, modality to look for rccs so kidney stake uptake normal normally the kidney stake uptake so rccs might be missed on pet ct however they usually are uh, more metabolic than the kidneys so uh, they do show more uptake than the kidneys okay ma'am uh, do you know the staging for rcc yes ma'am there is tnm staging in t1 there is t1 a uh, the tumor size is less than 4 cm t1 b 4 to 7 cm size and confined to kidney t2 is also limited to kidney in t2 a so the size is 7 to 10 cm t2 b uh, size more than 10 cm t3 uh, the tumor extends into the major veins or perinephric tissues uh t3a is extension into renal vein t3b is extension into infradiaphragmatic ivc t3c or uh, extension to supradiaphragmatic ivc uh in t4 uh, there is uh, it involves ipsilateral adrenal gland or uh, goes beyond gerotus fascia uh, then uh, n n0 is known lymph nodal involvement n1 metastatic involvement of regional lymph node m is for distant metastasis okay m1 is m m1 is for distant metastasis yes ma'am
so uh, if the patient's uh, creatinine is deranged and the patient has a renal mass and you want to evaluate it what will you do you cannot give contrast so what can you do next uh, we can first evaluate with ultrasound ma'am and contrast enhanced ultrasound yes contrast enhanced ultrasound could be can be give, uh, done in these patients okay so we'll go move to the next case yes ma'am so this was just to show that this patient also had portal vein thrombosis splenic vein thrombosis and smv thrombosis with bowel dilatation yes ma'am this is case 2 a 20 year old female complaining of pain and lump in the abdomen and neck easy fatigability and breathlessness so i'll show the images once again
So Shubhi, you can start. Yes, ma'am. Uh, on ultrasound, ma'am, uh, we can see an ill-defined iso to hypoechoic lesion in the upper pole of right kidney, which uh, shows significant vascularity. And a uh, similar morphology lesion is also seen in the uh, uh, upper pole of left kidney. Uh, in this slide, we can see uh, a pan bulky pancreas with heterogeneous ecotexture. Uh, also, there is a uh, irregular uh, stomach wall thickening, which is showing vascularity on uh, color doctor. So there are actually hypoechoic nodules seen within the pancreas here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the right ovary is bulky, uh, which shows a heterogeneous lesion within showing vascularity. Also, the left lobe of thyroid is bulky, showing a hypoechoic nodule within and showing a minimal internal vascularity. Oh. These are the CT images of the lesion in which we can see ill-defined ill-defined isodense lesions in uh, bilateral kidneys which show hypoenhancement on contrast phase. Also, uh, the pancreas is bulky with suboptimal enhancement. In uh, stomach, we can see an endoluminal mass lesion which is uh, hypoenhancing on contrast phase. In the pelvis, we can see the uh, uh, heterogeneously enhancing lesions on both sides in pelvis. And ovaries are not seen separately from them. And there is ascites. Oh, yes, ma'am. And mild ascites. And mild moderate. Uh, and there is a uh, omental uh, thickening. What do you see here? The uh, we can see the pelvic lesions, ma'am. Uh, and in the perineum involving the vulva. Yes, ma'am. There is a mass here. Yes, ma'am. Enhancing mass. These are the MRI images uh, in which we can see that the uh, lesion, endoluminal lesion in stomach is showing restriction of diffusion and low ADC. Also, the lesions in pancreas and bilateral kidneys are showing restriction and low ADC. And same is the case for uh, the lesions in ovaries, bilateral. Okay. So what's your diagnosis? Uh, this is uh, involving multiple systems, ma'am. And uh, likely diagnosis is lymphoma. Yes, right. So if you just saw the renal lesions, what else could have been your diagnosis? Metastasis. Yes, metastasis. So what are the abdominal manifestations of lymphoma? Uh, retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy. Okay. What happens with the liver? You see organomegaly, right? Liver, spleen. Yes, ma'am. And there are de deposits in the liver, spleen. Yes, ma'am. 
Yeah, and here you can see the stomach is involved. What what else is involved in lymphoma? Small bowel. Yes, in bowel, what is the typical appearance of lymphoma that we see? What type of dilatation do we see? Whether there is narrowing or dilatation. In any uh, small bowel tumor, we usually see there is what happens to the lumen? Narrowing. Whereas in lymphoma, what do we see? Dilatation. There is dilate, aneurysmal dilatation of the bowel. And why is it so? Do you know? It is due to replacement of muscularis by the tumor. Or the, uh, another possibility is infiltration of the myentric nerve plexus. Okay, right. Do you know what are the typical CNS appearances of lymphoma? Uh, when lymphoma uh, affects the brain, what is the typical appearance that you get? What is the typical location, signal intensity, spectroscopy? Supratentorial location. Yes. Lymphoma classically uh, uh, spreads along the uh, CSF sites of CSF contact, like they are along the periventricular surface, the lesions are. On T2, how do the lesions look? ISO2, hypo intense, ma'am. T, uh, yeah, hypo intense. And on CT, how do they look? Hyper dense. Hyper dense. What happens with diffusion restriction? They show restricted diffusion. Yeah. Okay, and why do they show a diffusion restriction? Because of uh, increased cellularity. High cellularity. And what is the uh, what happens in spectroscopy? Raised choline peak. Uh, raised choline. And peak. reverse choline creatinine ratio. Okay. Um, what are the ball? Uh, the renal lesions are divided into two types: ball type and bean type. Do you know the uh, differentials of ball type of lesions and bean type of lesions? Yes, ma'am. Ball type. Uh, there are RCC, angiomyolipoma, oncocytoma, metastasis. Uh, in bean type, we can see transitional cell carcinoma, lymphoma. Uh, metastasis uh, can occur both as ball and bean type and infiltrating renal mass. Infiltrating. Okay. Lymphoma can appear both as ball and bean type. How does lymphoma involve the kidney? What are the patterns of involvement? Uh, the most common pattern is multiple masses. Then uh, there is single mass invasion from retroperitoneal uh, lymph node, diffuse infiltration, and uh, perirenal mass. Yeah, peri the kidneys could appear bulky, or there could be masses like this, like in this case, or there the kidneys will appear normal, and there will be perinephric soft tissue seen. And uh, which type of lymphoma involves the kidneys? Non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Non -Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, so we are done with uh, the first two cases. Thank you, ma'am. So, Pooja, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, this is your first case, three-year-old male child with abdominal swelling. There are only three slides in this case. I'll show them once again.
so can you start uh, yes ma'am uh, this is a hypodense mass uh, seen on the left side of the abdomen with the kidney not seen separately on contrast phase it shows heterogeneous enhancement with uh, multiple non enhancing areas and uh, uh, the lesion shows uh, a pseudo capsule around it uh, the kidney is not seen separately from the lesion and it is causing mass effect on the bowel loops and uh, other structures okay so uh, what are your differentials uh differentials are uh, wilms tumor and uh, neuroblastoma then uh, clear cell sarcoma and angiolipoma uh this lesion is not hype it doesn't contain the fat within it it's not hypodense no yes ma'am so aml is out and uh, lipid poor amls usually are not so huge so huge amls can be very huge but the lipid poor ones are not so big so here can you see some uh, something here what is this uh, this is uh, calcific uh, this is uh, the compressed uh, parenchyma of the kidney so what sign is this uh, big sign yeah, big sign or the claw sign so uh, so uh, then what is your final diagnosis uh, wilms tumor wilms tumor okay so how do you differentiate a wilms tumor from a neuroblastoma uh, in wilms tumor uh, cal in a neuroblastoma the calcifications are more common and uh, uh, in uh, wilms tumor calcifications are uncommon and uh, it can uh, include extend into the ivc and the renal veins also uh, wilms tumor can give rise to uh, metastasis uh, into liver or uh, lungs then a uh, retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy is more common with neuroblastoma and bone metastases are more common with neuroblastoma uh the neuroblastoma also encase the vascular in structures and they don't uh, invade into the ivc or renal vein okay so what are the associations of wilms tumor uh wilms tumors are uh, associated with uh, uh back with weedman syndrome uh and uh, dennis rash syndrome and it may be also associated with uh, uh soto syndrome and what type of anomalies could be associated with wilms tumor uh with wilms tumor uh, there can be aniridia and genito urinary urinary anomalies yes what is the precursor of wilms tumor there is a nephroblastosis okay and how do they appear on imaging uh, they appear as uh, ill defined masses mostly bilateral and uh, on uh, ct they are generally hypo show hypo attenuation as compared to the kidney and uh, on mr they have low signal intensity on t1 and t2 and uh, are hypo enhancing to the kidney uh, normal kidney okay and uh, one point you missed that is in neuroblastoma can also extend in uh, via the neural foramen into the spinal canal whereas wilms tumor does not do so and uh, what is the main uh, differentiation between them that also you missed uh, uh wilms tumor arises uh, what, what is the organ of origin uh, wilms tumor arises from the kidneys from the blastemal cells and neuroblastomas uh from the neuroendocrine cells 
from which organ from the adrenal adrenal gland so in wilms tumor you will see the adrenal gland separately and you will see this clausi commonly okay so let's move on to case 4 This is a twenty-two-year-old female with jaundice. So I'll show the slides once more.
ओके सो पूजा यू कैन स्टार्ट दिस इज द यूएसडी इमेज ऑफ द किडनी शोइंग हाइपर डेंसिटी हाइपर इकोइक मेडिला एंड कैल्सिफिक फोकाय आर सीन इन द मेडिला then this is the ct the ct image we can see a uh, mildly dilated cbd with uh, ihbrd and uh, central and peripheral dilatation of the cystic duct uh, cystic and fusiform dilatation of the segmental biliary duct so there is a splenomegaly and uh, a uh, few collaterals are seen at splenic hilum uh, the kidney shows a uh, few calcific foci uh, in the medullary region and uh, multiple small cyst in the at the cortico medullary junction and in the medulla in the mri we can see the in the liver we can see dilated biliary radicals with uh, uh, which are a uh, t2 hyper intense cystic dilatation and uh, kidney shows a uh, uh, t2 hyper intense uh, cyst in the medullary region and a uh, few t2 hypo intense area which are uh, likely calculi and uh, there splenomegaly with uh, t2 hypo intense areas with them the kidney shows a uh, multiple uh, hyper intense cyst in the medullary region and uh, in uh, liver we can see multiple dilatations of the uh, intrahepatic biliary duct same thing so so it's the same thing here so what's your diagnosis there is a uh, carolis disease as a, there is intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation and uh, medullary sponge kidney in which there are multiple cysts and calcifications in the kidney and what is the uh, result of carolis disease what else are we seeing uh, there is portal hypertension there is splenomegaly and very uh, splenic hyalur collateral okay so this is a case of uh, medullary sponge kidney with carolis disease and portal hypertension so what is medullary sponge kidney uh, medullary sponge kidney uh, is a disease in which the medullary and uh, papillary portion of uh, collecting ducts are dilated and form cyst and in that there are, there is calcification so there is nephrocalcinosis and uh, it is uh, associated with uh, beckwith weidman syndrome carolis disease and uh, erler danlos syndrome okay what is the classical appearance on I, uh, ivp uh, there is a uh, pain brush appearance or uh, pain brush appearance or a uh, bouquet of uh, flower appearance in the pilographic way why do we get this appearance Be because there are um, uh, the callus and in the calluses there is a um, uh, dilated collecting duct and uh, micro calcifications so the dilated cal calluses give collecting duct give a pain brush okay. collecting duct so actually in this case we are not seeing cysts but we are seeing all these dilated collecting ducts here the linear ones which are also uh, better seen on these uh, thin tetuated images okay so what are the other cystic diseases of the kidney that you know of there is uh, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease autosomal recessive polycystic kidney disease and and medullary sponge yeah and multicystic kidney disease and uh, acquired uh, uh, cystic kidney disease is also there in which condition do we get acquired cysts within the kidney 
in case of uh, chronic hemodialysis patient so do you know the criteria ultrasound criteria for diagnosis of adpkd uh, there is revine criteria in which uh, for uh, 30 to uh, 50 years of age we if there are more than equal to uh, three cyst uh, then uh, we call it adpkd it is divided as a one with positive family history and one with a, with negative family history uh, in case of positive family history uh, in less than 30 years of age uh, two cyst bilaterally are uh, adpkd in uh, 30 to 60 years four cyst bilaterally and more than 60 years eight cyst bilaterally and uh, in patients with negative family history uh for patients younger than 60 years five cysts bilaterally and more than 60 years uh, eight cysts bilaterally okay what are the uh, syndrome uh, which syndromes are associated with renal cysts uh, syndromes associated are uh, von hippel lindau syndrome and um, uh autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease and, and yeah. carolis uh, disease can be associated okay and also tuberous sclerosis so uh, which other uh, renal lesion occurs in tuberous sclerosis angiomyelitis okay so uh, what are the other uh, what happens in vhl von hippel lindau syndrome Uh, in von hippel lindau syndrome there are cysts in uh, liver and uh, pancreas and kidneys uh, and uh, there are uh, multiple tumors there is uh, rcc clear type and uh, in adrenal there are uh, few chromocytomas and uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors can be seen then uh, in brain there is uh, hemangioblastoma mm, that is and, uh, and uh, retinal hemangioblastoma okay and endolymphatic sac tumors which are the cystic uh, renal uh, tumors that you know this there is cystic nephroma yeah, multi cystic nephroma do you know the bosniak classification for renal cysts uh, in bosniak classification in type 1 we take simple cyst with uh, a thin wall and no septa solid component or calcification within in bosniak 2 uh, we have thin wall with um, uh, which may be hyper dense cyst or with a single septa 2f are those cysts that need follow up which may have mildly enhancing walls or few septa within then uh, bosniak type 3 uh, cysts have thickened wall irregular walls or septa within and uh, they have chance of malignancy uh, and bosniak type 4 have solid enhancing nodule or uh, in their wall or septum so they are malignant yeah so what is the clinical implication of this of the bosniak uh, so classification bosniak 1 and 2 are benign and uh, need no follow up uh, bosniak uh, type 2f needs follow up and bosniak type 3 partial nephrectomy is done or surgical resection of the tumor is done and in type 4 we do nephrectomy as it's uh, malignant Yeah, so three and four both are excised. So, uh, nephrectomy can be either partial or complete. So, do you know when do we go for partial nephrectomy? And uh, what, case, what what is the other name for it? Uh, in case of uh, uh, Bosniak type three lesions or complex cyst, we can do partial nephrectomy. And uh, if there is malignancy, then we do. nephrectomy 
with a uh, higher nephrometric score so uh, the other name for partial nephrectomy is nephron sparing surgery so uh, whenever a tumor is less than 4 cm or if it is located at the poles of the kidney partial nephrectomy can be done or a nephron sparing surgery can be done or in cases when there is bilateral tumors are present then partial nephrectomy because you cannot go for total nephrectomy on both sides so in those cases partial nephrectomy is done and complete total nephrectomy is done when the patient's egfr is good so uh, you are doing uh, a ct a uh, plain ct kb and you see a hyperdense uh, lesion within the kidney so what would be your differentials there can be a hemorrhagic cyst or a cyst complicated by an infection or or uh, there can be rcc or any neoplastic lesion yes then how do you differentiate on contrast uh, ct we get enhancement of in case of neoplastic lesion okay do you know what are uh, pseudo tumors of the kidney uh, they are uh, tumors due to uh, masses due to infection or uh, any infiltrative uh, process mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they or they can be due to any developmental anomaly like uh, dromedary hump or uh, persistent column of bertini uh, then uh, infectious causes can be there like renal abscess and tb so uh, what is uh, renal papillary necrosis in a uh, renal papillary necrosis uh, there is necrosis of the tip of papillae uh, it can be seen in renal tuberculosis or in case of uh, and uh, drug nef drug induced nephropathy what is the uh, signs of uh, renal uh, papillary necrosis on ivp or they can also be seen on ct moth eaten appearance of the renal papilla can be seen and uh, they can be uh, a ball on t sign and and then uh, a lobster claw sign can be seen or there could be a sloughed of papilla appearing as filling defect so here uh, so whenever you are uh, doing a kub study you just go to the coronal images and you see whether the calices are uh, uh, sharply seen and the cupping is maintained if they appear like this irregular it means uh, the papillae are damaged there could be papillary necrosis so uh, we are done ma'am thank you uh, dr anish yeah uh no, dr Do madula uh yeah yes do you want to ask them any questions? Uh, uh, no, I think you have covered comprehensively uh, most of the related to the topic and uh, the renal system in general. Uh, when sir is there, sir, you want to ask uh, any question? Yeah, Dr. Murdala, I, I think the four cases now, all are... Uh, very good typical cases typical cases especially the last one the medullary necrosis with the coronary disease i think is very rare yes. Uh, yes, yes rarely we come across such cases and then lymphoma and then wimps tumor and then renal cell carcinoma all are good cases and <clears throat> the questions are also very good and uh, these are the type of questions which are usually asked in the exam now asked in the exam yes. so um, uh, for the residents, actually, whenever you uh, whenever you get a uh, renal lesion, especially cystern or just uh, you be thorough with two syndromes, that is VHL syndrome and uh, tuberous sclerosis. Now, this will be invariably asked. 
and then the other things and all. <laughs> I think probably the residents are noting down the questions which have been asked uh, so that uh, you can just refresh your uh, questions and all just before the exam. That would be good. Just uh, one doubt. Uh, uh, that is in the renal medullary necrosis now. It, it is said that it was said that uh, it's calcification, calcification in the kidney. So the, I really doubt whether these are calcification or calculi, because actually renal medullary necrosis. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, medullary sponge kidney. Uh, what you get is dilator collecting ducts. So collecting ducts in the collecting ducts, what are they? They are actually calculi only. That, that, that's what I feel. It's not calcification. Calcification you get in the parenchyma, whereas calcula you can get in the tubules or in the collecting systems. Am I right? Yes, sir, yes. So instead of calcification, you can say it's calcula. Okay, so sir. multiple calcula are seen um, in that medulla, I mean, in the um, medulla. So suggesting uh, medullary, medullary sponge kidney, like that. No? So that's all. Uh, otherwise, Oh, it's very fine. And uh, also you kept in time. It's good. Yeah, everything went on well. All the cases were very good and was discussed beautifully. It was very useful for the residents who are listening also because all exam-oriented cases and spotters also. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Mridula. Thank you, Anish. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, I'm here to thank uh, everyone who I'll start with Dr. Mridula uh, for uh, uh, giving her time for IREA Kerala and uh, having such a wonderful session, having not just more than the cases, it was uh, like, you know, very comprehensive, uh, very detailed and PGs were also well prepared and the discussion was very nice. Uh, I thank you once again, Dr. Mridula. And, thank you. Uh, uh, P, uh, PG's uh, Dr. Uh, Pooja and Dr. Shubhi, uh, it was wonderful. Uh, even though you got the cases, you know, like the spot, you are well prepared and the discussion was very nice. Thank you. Now, I would thank like you. to thank our IRA office wearers, uh, IRA State President uh, Dr. Gomadi Ma'am, IRA State Secretary Rijo Matthew Sir, Academic Chairman Venugopal Sir, and uh, State Academic Coordinator Ramesh Anai Sir. Uh, for organizing and having such a wonderful program going on. I also thank uh, the faculty, uh, the residents and the faculties who are watching the, who are watching this program. Uh, I also thank our IT team uh, led by uh, uh, Saumia, that is Medpiper Journal Med, uh, for giving us this platform. Uh, 